So honestly, in this series between Boom Esports and LGD, I really didn't understand the general idea of drafting behind Boom Esports. I just really didn't like their picks, and I'll kind of get into why. I think there's some synergy between them, but let's talk about it. So also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below. I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. LGD leads Death Prophet, which is kind of insane. We see a response Monkey King Dazzle, which I don't think is bad by any means, but I absolutely don't see this as a general response to DP. And the reason why is DP is a sustain hero in fights. I honestly think sustain heroes are generally good against Dazzle, because even if someone gets graved, DP can kind of stick on top of them, kite out, and go back in. In the lane, Monkey King does not. I would say it goes even with DP, but like, I don't know, it's like, it's like okay, right? It goes even? And then we see the Shaker come out. And immediately when you see the Shaker, it's like all of a sudden the Poison Touch isn't going to do that much to the DP, right? And you can get the lane back so DP can hit level 3 early, and that's when she can pressure Monkey King with level 2 Spirit Siphon. So I really didn't understand this opener from Boom. I think they must have just really preferred these heroes. I think Dazzle's honestly fine because it's just a good hero, but I don't really think it's that good against DP. Um, even in the lane, if you Poison Touch the DP, if Shaker and DP go on you with a level 2 Siphon, you can kind of trade back. Maybe not with Monkey King shifting over, and that's kind of the idea, right? If Dazzle Poison touches, you have a strong carry that could follow up. And so I think that is a reasonable response in that regard, if that's where they were coming from. I don't understand the Mars, though. I, I think this is kind of just like a game plan thing from them, from B Boom Esports. It makes it hard to be counterpicked, because the Mars could be mid, it could be offlane. Um, so there's that. Even can be 4 for some teams. I've seen that a couple times. It's really good with Wukongs for obvious reasons. They're about the same AoE. And so you can keep uh, people in Monkey King ulti with, with Mars, uh, Spear, and Arena very effectively. Other than that, though, I think Mars is absolutely horrendous against DP. It's a non-reliable disable in the Spear. DP often rushes BKB, which I think annihilates Mars. Spear Siphon annihilates Mars. Exo annihilates Mars. I just would have preferred to see an instant disable against the DP. And the reason why is... It gives you the ability to then just Wukong on her, right? And so I felt that the Mars was a bit unreliable in that regard, especially considering it, it kind of just means the DP can rush BKB. We now see a Void response, a Void Ench response from LGD, and I like this because it's very hard to counter this lane. The heroes that typically beat Void in lane, such as Viper, Venno, they despise Enchantress creeps in the laning stage. So, on that note, what LGD does um, is they go for Doom, and it's like, okay, this is sort of a response to Ench and Void, because you can eat Ench creeps, you have high armor, so you don't really get bullied out by Ench Void, and so I don't mind this pick. My dilemma, though, is they have a severe damage problem on Boom Esports in the mid-game, from my, my perspective. I think it's pretty hard for them to just reliably kill people without committing Doom. Like, if they're not using Doom, or they're not using Arena, or... Even if they are using Arena, I think it's going to be very hard for them to kill people, and they don't have good catch. Until this Mars or Doom Blink Dagger comes out, they can't get on top of anyone. Where with LGD, you have the Fisher, you have Chrono, and so it's it's a lot easier to get on top of targets and, and make plays around the map with your Exo. I don't really see the synergy between these heroes. From my perspective, it kind of just feels like Boom is responding to their picks. Now, I could be wrong. I'm not Boom Esports. Like, I... I never try to claim that I know exactly what these players are thinking, I don't, but it just felt like response pick after response pick um, from Boom rather than kind of a cohesive draft. I feel like a big thing about LGD is they more often than not draft in a way where their heroes synergize and then have a game plan counter to the enemy. Even with the Zeus, I think it just makes so much sense because the enemy team has a lot of heroes that need BKB and Zeus is really good at poking BKB. Funny enough, Mars is a common response pick to Zeus because the arena trap is good against Heavenly Jump. Even though I've seen that you can hop out of it, if, I think if you bump into the wall, you can then hop out of it. But either way, they have really good poke now. They have a clear frontliner in, in the DP. They have a clear frontliner in the Enchantress more realistically. Ench will just walk in. And Ench is so good with Void and Zeus because Void and Zeus cannot get gone on. They can't get doomed. They don't want to get doomed. 
they really cannot afford to even get stunned in most circumstances as they're, as they're pretty squishy in the early game. Pre, pre Void BKB and pre like Zeus level 15. They're pretty squishy. And she just gives so much information with her body and with her creep. So there's a lot of synergy there and the ability to force BKBs with Zeus and basically just have a hero that scales in terms of the damage in the mid game is incredibly good. I, I think this Zeus pick is just wonderful here. Um, it's very hard for them to counter pick it because I also think they kind of have to respond to Void. I don't I think Doom is okay. It's like okay, but it's going to be very hard for Doom to jump the Void this game for a couple of reasons. What's the main one? You now have a Zeus ult. <laughs> so if a fight breaks out or you have any sort of inkling that Zeus is, you know, I mean that uh, Doom is going to hunt you, you click Zeus ult at the beginning of the fight. All of a sudden, Doom blink dagger canceled. You get information and you chrono Doom instead of it being the other way around, right? And now I like the last pick. I do. I like the last pick of the Veno. To some extent, the reason why is I think they needed a vision hero. They need a hero to put down, to send units, whether or not that's a Beastmaster, which is rough against Ench, or a Lycan, kind of rough against Ench. Venno is better against Ench, kind of feeds to the creep, doesn't like the creep, but they have a Doom to protect it in that regard, right? So I think the Venno pick, it, it's a counter to Void because you can't really time walk Venno damage. Um, I will say that time dilation is rough for Venno because your movement speed sucks. So like you really just lose, you have like zero movement speed if you get time dilated with um, Gale and Plague Ward on cooldown. So I don't know. I, I just kind of felt like it was an overall outdraft. I think the damage types from Boom is very weird. I think they come online at minute like 40 on, on Boom when even then it's like you're fighting into a, I just, I don't know. It, it felt, it felt like a lot of response picks from Boom. And I think this is what a lot of teams do, and it can work. It's a very viable strategy in drafting where, especially when you have second pick, which they do, they have second pick, you respond to picks. Often when you're playing second pick, you, you don't really formulate a draft as much, but when you're on first pick, like LGD does, you're picking heroes that work really well together, where boom, and, and on second pick, you can respond more. And I think that's what they were doing here, but I, I don't know, it just doesn't, I, I don't think these heroes play too well together. That's my vibe of this game. So honestly, what I think ends up being the biggest downfall of, of Boom's draft this game is they pick this like Venno as the counter, right? So they pick this Venno, they counter pick, right, this Void. It's theoretically a hard counter pick, and yet it loses lane pretty handedly. It's currently 200 net worth down, right? And, and in terms of CS, it becomes much more drastic shortly after it gets zoned out by this creep, right? Because the Doom goes mid, which I understand, right? He, uh, they do end up kind of bodying nothing to say, right? To some extent, the Zeus, I was going to say he's getting shut down. <laughs> I was going to say that because like he died, but even then his he just is completely out CSing the Mars, which is kind of weird. I actually actually don't understand how he's so far ahead. It's so weird. How is he, how is he like way behind? All right, either way, moving on. The Void kind of just gets to the point where, and, and how Void Ench works against Venom. This Venno literally cannot lane if he gets left alone. So Doom, basically because of this Ench pick and them responding with Doom, the Venno will never be able to lane alone. And, and that's kind of my problem partially with this pick as well. I think when you have a situation where your offlaner can basically never solo lane or comfortably solo lane, you, you get put into a situation where you have to you have to keep your four player top for like the majority of the lane. And for Doom, that can be a little bit weird. Um, not terrible because honestly, Doom doesn't roam too well, but he wants to be eating creeps for, for Devour Gold, but instead he's going to have to eat Ench creeps. And in general, it's just going to be a bit of a mess for this Venom. You'll see from his perspective, he's like trying to jungle a large camp, right? Even then he gets like a little bit desperate and starts stacking and even looking to jungle side camps, right? It's just, it just looks bad, right? You never want to be having to jungle a large camp as Venom six minutes into the game. I mean, it's not that it's terrible, but it costed him a full salve, which is the cost of, of the camp, for some XP. And then even now, he has to be so afraid of a chrono, right? So he loses his lane by a thousand gold because of some good pulls later on into the lane. I honestly don't like that Doom left the lane at any point. I know that sounds crazy and maybe players would disagree because you have to contest runes. It's really valued at the, at the pro level. But I don't know, man. This guy just gets abandoned. And all of a sudden, he's just... He's poor, right? He's just straight up poor. And on top of that, he goes a max W build, which is a build that is meant to harass the void. I don't really know if I like this at this point because it's like he barely can harass void without it becoming dangerous. I mean, maybe he can, maybe I'm crazy, but it's hard for him to harass void now because he's so far behind, even though he's going to look to do it, right? Um, 
but he's not going to have a lot of points in Plague Wards to actually farm, and he skipped this ulti, which is actually your main way of killing the Void if you did want to go on him. So the next thing LGD does well uh, that I thought was kind of cool is they're actually just jungling camps on Faith Beyond. He maxed his Q, which makes me think that he knew he would get to the point where he needed to shove wave rather than fight because maxing E on DP is way better if you can. The max HP is damage scales incredibly well. You get more charges and the charge time goes down. So it's like an incredibly good ability when it comes to scaling, like Siphon scales insanely well. So anytime DPs don't max Siphon, I, I really question it, but he kind of had to like just shove waves this game. They're seemingly not trying to force the issue. After all, they have like a Void Zeus, they just need to scale. Like really, this DP is gonna maybe try to win the early game fights for them, but from there, they're just gonna try to really scale. And then this was this was freaking huge. Zinq just barely getting his spells off. He's gonna TP top the to farm. This is extremely common on Shaker, right? If they shove in the dead lane, you'll go to the dead lane because you can Fisher to protect yourself, and you need to farm a Blink Tagger. Now they're gonna go on him here, and they get greedy. They could have doomed him, but they didn't. Infernal Blade doesn't go off. And a beautiful response from Zinq to not panic, right? He doesn't panic. That allows him to get off every single spell, setting up for a two-man chrono. And by the way, this Mars is their mid laner, and he just dies as well. All of a sudden, a 1k gold swing in the favor of LGD. Uh, and so, yeah, it's it's just one of those plays where I think Zinq knows what to do. And it's kind of what I talked about with, I don't think their heroes work well together. I just, I don't get picking a Mars mid, right? It's like you pick Mars mid, right? And then... Your four is a Doom. Like, what is the follow-up on Arena? It's Scorched Earth, right? And the follow-up to Doom is Arena. <laughs> your follow-up to your big cooldown is another big cooldown, which means if, even if you kill the Shaker there, you're committing two big cooldowns, and you're just completely on cooldown. And it's that can be okay if you're completely fine with scaling, which, I mean, they, they scale fine. Like, Veno, as a hero, scales pretty well. But, I mean, the problem is you're, you're scaling also into a, like a Void Zeus Shaker, which is pretty rough. And I, all I'm saying is like when you pick something like Mars mid or Mars offlane, I think it's generally important that you have a Snapfire or a Hoodwink or a Mirana, something that is a very natural follow-up to the Arena Spear combo so that you don't have to overcommit, right? Because if they had a proper follow-up ability, that's just a kill on a Shaker, but they don't and it turns into a, you know, a double kill for LGD. Also, LCD seemingly isn't really afraid to throw away a couple lives, right? They actually lose their DP bottom here, and I don't think that's what they want to do. I think realistically what they want is to have the Enchantress protect the Death Prophet. I think at the time, deep, uh, the Enchantress is actually protecting the Zeus in the jungle, but because DP dies bottom, it actually enables Shaker to get his blink, and the thing about pro Dota is people are so good nowadays where it's really hard to just, like, own games. Most games, unless you somehow stomp three lanes, which is really hard with how good people are at drafting and how flexible most teams are. It, it's very hard to do that, right? And so most games are going to be pretty even, and you have to know your timings. LGD has a very, very greedy draft, right? Just to make this clear, Void's a pretty greedy hero. Zeus is a very greedy hero. You need shard before, honestly, you're that strong. Like Zeus without shard, pretty mediocre hero. Honestly, I really believe that. And then from there, you have a DP, right? Not that greedy, can get active, but even his cooldown rely. Most greedy hero on their team, Urshaker. It's a very, very greedy hero. People don't get this. Shaker is extremely greedy as a hero. It is. Because it's really quite underwhelming as uh, an initiator, as a roamer, previous to the Blink Dagger, compared to Tusk, compared to Clockwork, compared to Tiny. This next sequence as well was very impressive. I guess they knew that the Veno, even if he gets graved, he can't get away, which... Honestly, I will be real, is another somewhat dilemma with the Dazzle pick. I think when you have Dazzle, it's really nice if you pick heroes that like giga benefit from getting graved. I will say Monkey King, Veno is okay because it can let you get your ulti off, of course. So like, it's kind of good. It's okay. Mars can't really heal though or disengage. Monkey King can't disengage. It can heal after getting graved, right, with Jingu. So I think it's not, I would say they have some synergy. I would say Monkey King Dazzle is definitely pretty cool because of Jingu, you know, you can you can really heal up and, and actually turn around fights when you get Grave. Something like Venno, it, the, the problem is like, he gets gone on here, right? And he just can't get away. He, he tries to TP, dies. This was the biggest play of the game though, in my opinion. After this, such a quick smoke, no hesitation from LGD, fight breaks down and they immediately with no vision of the enemy, make a read that Monkey King is gonna be farming the triangle. They didn't even know where he was. 
Pithion smoke broke and he didn't even see the guy. <laughs> but they do end up killing him off with the Exo. Nice use of the Exo. Not fearing to just pop it, even though he's close to level uh, 11, I mean level 12. Then he goes to the top wave and they confidently split up the map. That's like a 2k gold swing. Crazy, man. Like, hey, it was probably like 1.5k because they split the map so efficiently. And no, it was like actually 2k. Really impressive. They do end up losing their Zeus mid, gets caught out, and they have to disengage. But either way, it was a really nice movement to kill off the Monkey King in the jungle. Funny enough, once again, this Venom just cannot get out, right? It cannot get out. And it's kind of what I talked about. They don't have, they just don't have a clean way to kill heroes. It's really a big problem for me in their draft. And it's something like LGD just has a much more, like when they have drafts, I feel like they have a hero that can kind of go in uh, and, and just like confidently go in and then get out like a BKB initiator. I don't really know who goes in and then gets out for boom. That really does the damage. Like they go on Zeus and I like, look what happens. They have to poison touch, scorched earth freaking everything to kill this guy they literally had to cast everything to kill him to be fair the end also pops off with the mega holy locket mega heal keeping the zeus alive for a stupid amount of time but that's what i'm saying like i mean they just don't have a good follow-up I, I can't i know i'm stressing this a lot but it's something to think about when you're picking your heroes in dota do they work well together or do they have to overcommit hard for kills because when you have to overcommit for kills in dota you feed you die that's exactly what happens to fbz they kill the zeus but it's like so what Right, this guy's gonna respawn. Yeah, it's a decent kill, but they had to commit a lot for it as well, committing the arena. And so they can maybe even fight. LGD can even look to fight mid here. Uh, and I think they were actually doing that. Yeah, they were looking. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know what this was from Yopaj. I don't I have no idea what they're looking for. Monkey King is not close to BKB, so it's like near impossible for this guy to fight into the enemy. The only way Monkey King can fight in the early game is if you bring the enemy team into you. If you bait them into you, then maybe he can fight. Um, but like, you can't like jump into the enemy. It's just almost impossible in the early game. It's very hard. So I don't, I really don't know what Yopaj was thinking with this play. Um, they like go on an inch and uh, he gets a little bit lucky on the rebuke, but he just like dies. Even if he got graved, he was obviously dead. I have no idea what that play was. That was very bizarre. They nearly get a huge boundless here. But once again, just. I don't want to say a lack of synergy between their heroes or just bad decision making, but it's a tournament game. You're against LGD. You're going to panic a bit. It's just like a bit weird because they legitimately do not have a follow-up stun for this Wukong. You might be like, oh, they have Boundless Strike and War Stomp. Well, he doesn't even have War Stomp on Doom. So they don't really like, even though this looks so good, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to ulti here. I have to. Somehow, I Zinkyu is hacking. He's hacking. Okay, now he, got, he just got lucky. They get a huge go on the back line. Does he die in Dazzle? Yeah, wow, he dies. That's so massive. Dazzle gets nothing off, but I mean, they weren't even close to really killing anyone. So to be fair, even if Zinkyu got hit by that, I don't think it would have mattered. I think pretty sure they just would have died anyway. So it might have even been worse. Maybe Monkey King would have died if he actually hit the Shaker. <laughs> so um, yeah, just, I don't know. A little bit of weird decision making from Boom. I feel like Boom's overplaying. I feel like LGD, one of the things they're really best at is like exploding on their timings. For instance, when they killed the Monkey King in the triangle, they have their Exo, they have their spells, they have their Blink Dagger, right? They, they can make their plays. And then when Boom goes, it's just like, he didn't even have Arena. He didn't have Arena, he didn't have BKB, Monkey King can't fight into them. It just didn't really make a lot of sense. Even this invasion, I get it, but it's really not accomplishing anything. It's another issue with their draft. It's like they respond so much with picks. They can't Roche, they can't take buildings. And so you have to be very careful with your, your initiations, right? LGD is DP, so they can Roche if they if they win a fight, if they want to. They have Ancient DP, they can take the Roche. But they go in here, it's like, okay, really nice play from Zinkyu to body this gank. This is largely intentional, I assure you, even though it looks like he's just farming this camp. He, he has no problem dying here. If you tank a smoke as a support in late game pro Dota, it's generally a win because smokes are incredibly valued. You have to be extremely careful about how much you do and do not use your smokes. Like that's some really high value information. I have no other way to put that, um, but. LGD, on the other hand, like, I just don't get the smoke from Boom. I don't, and I'm not trying to flame them too much because I'm sure every player on Boom is a better Dota player than me. Like, I, I, I think when people hear me say this, they might take it the wrong way. Don't take it that way. I'm I'm just saying, like, from a like a Dota perspective, this gang in the triangle, I guess they're trying to kill Void. Even if they kill Void and they Doom him, they're not going to get Roche off of it. And realistically, LGD is going to see them Doom the Void, Doom Arena the Void, which they have to do to kill him, I would argue. 
in that situation, which they probably would, they're gonna get Roche off of it. They would, he would respawn and they're gonna take Roche. And it's like, you have to be so careful about your movements against a team like LGD, because I think when they make their movements, it's very, they're so good about making sure good things actually come out of it. It's not just like some random ass kill that just leads into nothing. It's not some 300 net worth gold swing kill. I feel like this movement, for instance, onto the high ground, if they get an exo kill here, they can Roche. Wow, look what they do. It seems so much more thoughtful and, and planned out. Because now they get an Aegis on Void. Uh, they try to counter initiate on Boom, but Monkey King can't do shit because they don't have a hard stun. They have You might be like, they have Spear. It's like, that ability is unreliable. It's like, it's very unreliable. It's predictable. Arena is kind of slow. Yes, it can be fast, but it's just... I don't know, I'm so anti-Mars. I think that hero is just trash, but some people disagree. Either way, thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned a lot from LGD, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.